We all know that open source is no longer just a developer movement. It's a foundation for infrastructure, collaboration, innovation, digital sovereignty, and much more than that. And nowhere is that shift more visible than in India. As we approach Open Source Summit in India, we are seeing open source adoption move beyond consumption to contribution with Indian developers and organizations playing a much bigger role in shaping global ecosystems. Joining me today is Arpit Joshi Pura, head of LF India at the Linux Foundation to talk about the growth of LF India, what to expect at this year's summit and how open source is evolving across AI, FinOps, and a lot of other technologies. Arpit, it's great to have you on the show. Nice to be on. It's my pleasure. Uh, as we all know that Open Source Summit India is just around the corner. Can you talk about what are some of the key themes, focus area this year, and how do they reflect where open source is heading more broadly in the subcontinent? So we are having the first Open Source Summit India in Hyderabad on August uh, 5th. And we're really excited about it, primarily because since the launch of LF India at KubeCon in New Delhi last December, we have seen significant momentum and significant participation from the Indian subcontinent. Just to give you a stat of um, you know developers, uh, we're now at 17 million open source developers in India and we saw a 30% year-to-date growth. This is the fastest in the world. So clearly, a lot of change and a shift has been happening in India. And as Linux Foundation and all its sub-foundations, we are really excited to support this initiative in India. And just to recap, I mean, our goal in India is very simple, it's three things. We want to promote open source collaboration across the Indian ecosystem, enterprises, startups, IGOs. We want to invest in developer training and labs and events and innovation. And then, of course, support India's mission of DPI with cutting edge technology and projects. Uh, when LF uh, India was announced, launched, you and I talked about it, that what it is all about. And ever since we talked last time, uh, the the foundation has kind of grown significantly. Can you also talk about this growth, this evolution? And if you have added uh, more sub-foundations, more projects to LF India? So let me first cover the status of the sub-foundations that were announced and what the progress is. So I'm going to start off with uh, the first five that were launched, uh, starting with LF decentralized trusts. So think blockchain. This project has been driving the internal guts of India's digital public infrastructure, right? Aadhaar card, Digiatra, all of these applications, uh, and all the members from India are doing exceptional work to a point where we have published an ebook for India on digital trust and des decentralized trust. Uh, so these are extremely important uh, uh, foundations that, that forms the basis of the DPI, okay? The second foundation is CNCF. CNCF is our uh, cloud native compute foundation, the home of Kubernetes. Uh, we've seen significant developer growth there. We've seen projects donated by India. Uh, the um, the inaugural KubeCon was hosted by CNCF in Delhi, and we saw almost 100 publications reporting. Now, just to give you some ideas of meetups that we supported, there were 10 hosted events, uh, KCD's uh, cloud native uh, meetups, and 51 active chapters. And this time, the Open Source Summit and KubeCon are being set up back to back. So CNCF is a is a big part of, parcel of of LF India. The third foundation, uh, or third and fourth, which is LF Networking, which is the telecom and the edge, that has seen very important progress. Uh, our platinum member Infosys donated two AI projects to LF Networking. They're called SDM and Salus. And these are AI frameworks for domain-specific AI in networking, as well as responsible AI. Now, what this shows 
is India is not just consuming open source. They are donating and leading and contributing front end. And thanks to Infosys and a lot of our partners, that has been possible on the networking side. There is also a project called iOS MCN that is happening in India, which is really a, a unified way of doing um, collaboration across the radio access networks all through the telecom chain. And that is being done uh, with LF networking and, and LF Edge as well. Uh, if you look at, if you look at OpenSSF, which is kind of the fifth foundation, that's the security foundation. Uh, we have a open SSF community day on August 4th, right before the OSS. Uh, we're already like at 200 attendees and, and 50 submissions, right? Uh, along with that, open SSF is doing webinars, in person meeting, education, training. So you can now get the gist of it, right? These sub foundations are, uh, you know, working with the India ecosystem for the India use cases and supporting it through the Global Neutral Foundation. So that's kind of a very quick high level overview of year to date progress. Now, you did ask what else is coming, right? Mm -hmm. Pleased to announce that we have six more sub foundations joining as part of the phase two LF India expansion and growth. And these are technologies that Everybody has been really, really excited about globally, and now they're coming to India. Okay, so let me start off with the the first one uh, in no particular order, but Open Infra. So Open Infra, which hosts OpenStack, now part of the Linux Foundation, um, since 2012 they have been having Open Infra in their user group, virtual meetups and a lot of contributions that come from the India developers. And so uh, now Open India, uh, Open Infra is proud to support LF India now as part of Linux Foundation. We also have um, uh, another sub foundation, Open 3D Engine. Uh, this is, while it's gaming, the big use case for India is on robotics, simulation, manufacturing clones, things like that. And we've seen a lot of requests for innovative use cases to try and test it out in the Indian uh, use cases. Uh, then the third one is Phenos. Phenos is really, um, for those of you who are familiar with it, it is really the, the, the financial, um, operate, uh, financial, uh, open source ecosystem. And we just completed a big hackathon hosted by DTCC. Uh, City Hackathon was uh, with over, over a thousand participants. Uh, there's one more planned in, in, in September. Uh, so you can get the gist of it, right? We are, these foundations are already supporting the India growth and the India ecosystem. Uh, the, the, the next one is on AgStack. So agriculture is a big part of India, as we all know. And AgStack provides a digital infrastructure for agriculture. And while you know, India's agriculture accounts almost for 17% of the GDP, India's GDP, and uh, almost half of the labor force, right? So clearly the digitalization or digitization with, you know, other like land ID or regulation compliance for food, et cetera, et cetera, is important. And that's what AgStack provides. So, so that's another big, um, um, big thing going on. We are on, we are in ongoing discussions with the government of India uh, for the AgriStack project and things like that. Um, then we have um, the next foundation is sub foundation is Phenops. Uh, Phenops is a is a is a is a foundation that has best practices across all industries. This is used by you know ninety four of the top one hundred uh, Fortune one hundred companies, eight thousand community members. Very, very strong community in India. And the meetups are in pretty much all the big cities. They're already happening. And now they are officially going to join uh, the support for LF India. And last but not the least, LF AI and data. What can we do without you know, AI these days? And so we're announcing that LF AI and data will also support the uh, LF India initiatives. 
uh, with uh, almost 70 plus projects and a whole bunch of uh, software that gets contributed into that. So I know it was a long answer, but we're really excited to launch these six along with the five. So, uh, you know, over 10 sub foundation. And by the way, these are the largest of the large in the Linux Foundation. No, no answer from you is long, but thank you for taking time and explaining that because that's what we need and that's why we're talking. So thank you so much for that. Now I want to shift focus and talk a bit about uh, the summit again. Uh, if I look at ERPIT personally, what are the, what are the sh uh, sessions or initiatives uh, that you are personally most excited to showcase at this year's event and if you can also talk about how do you see lf india is going to use this summit as a platform to deepen engagement and expand awareness across the community as you already gave a lot of examples where a lot of you know indian companies vendors they have started contributing to open source already uh yeah so first of all i'm very excited about the keynotes um uh, you know we have famous personalities, you know, chief architects of Aadhaar Card and, you know, Pramod Verma and some of the, some of the ce local celebrities that are speaking, uh, including we will have our uh, chief secretary of special projects um, in the Telangana Hyderabad office. So uh, there's a, there's, there's a great set of uh, keynotes uh, that I'm excited about. Um, then the sessions are really around the classic, you know, blockchain, uh, networking, embedded Linux, open AI data, leadership, decentralized trust, uh, cloud, you know, the, the topics that are running modern open source critical infrastructure. And why, and if, if you remember when I mentioned in 2021, the government of India outlined a policy that specifically mentioned that open source is the way to build your critical infrastructure. So we don't even have to convince the India ecosystem why open source. It is mandated by the government. And so all the uh, community is adopting it. Now it's, the question is how fast can we go? So I'm really excited about these uh, keynotes and about this session. And by the way, uh, you know, it, it's turning out to be a sold out show. <laughs> It is. It has to be. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, now, as uh, you and I had this real earlier, that the contribution from India is increasing. But when we look at it, you know, it's, there is a kind of uh, growing conversation around moving from being open source consumer to open source contributor. What's LF India going to do or doing to support that ship, and how this event? can further help uh, drive it? And this, by the way, great, great question. This is true for any part of the world, but specifically for India, we see, you know, three, three phases. Uh, the first phase is really awareness. Uh, do people know on, you know, open source and why open source. I think we've gone past that stage now with, with all the support and all the excitement that goes on. Uh, there are still some countries that that still work in a proprietary model and don't see the value. And so, you know, education is required. So that's the first phase, we're past that phase. The second phase is, oh great, open source is free. So let me download and start putting it in. And they, Typically there, the challenge is, you know, hey, it's free, yes, but if you consume and if you fork, here are all the bad practices, you will never benefit, you will never be able to catch up. That's not the right way to do it. Upstream contribution is the right way. Collaboration is the right way uh, lead and, and things like that. So that phase we started last year and now we're getting to the third phase. Uh, so we're kind of in between two and three. And then the third phase is really, uh, leadership, open source leadership, where you're moving not just from, from consumption, but you're moving from consumption to contribution and leadership. And uh, as you saw in, in the example, Infosys has shown great leadership of donating some of the cutting edge AI projects to LF. And now the global community benefits from it, not just India, global community, right? So we're starting to see bits and pieces of these large Indian organizations to step up and contribute and host and drive these initiatives so that we can, we can see a path 
for future leadership uh, as India becomes the largest open source developer hub in the next five years. If you look at Linux Foundation, it's a foundation of foundation. You mentioned some of the big projects like CLC of OpenSS of Finos. Uh, can you also talk about, you did touch upon that earlier, but I want to have a segment dedicated to that. Uh, how closely or how LF India works closely with these global organizations, CNC of OpenSS of Finos, and uh, how are those collaborations being localized in Indian ecosystem uh, where it will see new partnerships, new engagement, which will also be reflected at this summit? Right. So the sub-foundations within the Linux Foundation, right, whether it's OpenSSF, CNCF, LFAI Data, uh, or any of these vertical specific foundations, LF Networking, uh, FinOps, FinOS, etc. Uh, all of these sub foundations are global by nature. Okay, so now what the, those foundations are doing is they are actually focusing on you know the three things that matter to India, which is promotion of collaboration across enterprises, startups, IGOs, right? Then they these foundations invest in. India-specific developer training events. You saw the meetup examples. We have labs in Bangalore, right, et cetera, et cetera, as Sandbox for Innovation with our partners. So they invest. And then the projects themselves um, are sitting at the heart of building their critical infrastructure, right? Whether it's telecommunications or whether it's cloud or whether it's security or AI or, 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 or finance, financial backbone, etc. cetera. Uh, so the way we have set it up is very simple. An organization from India does not have to join LF India. They just join a Linux Foundation, the big Linux Foundation. But the two-way collaboration from the global to India and then from India upstream back in is seamless through the neutral governance that we have set up. Uh, so from, from, from my perspective, if you are a developer in India and you join a particular project or sub foundation, um, you can work on India specific use cases, add it to the repos. And if you believe that these are globally valuable and you want to take leadership on that, you upstream it and you're good. Right? So we're kind of keeping it very, very simple. Uh, and we're making a consistent operative mode by which these foundations can operate in India. Arvind, thanks for joining us and for helping understand how India's open source ecosystem is growing, not just in numbers, but in global influence. Thanks for your great insights. And I look forward to chat with you again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.